Well, hey, friends, so glad that you're with me here on another edition of the Thriving Christian Artist Podcast. Super excited to have a new friend of mine, Bonnie Brooks, who is here today to talk about something that I know many, many of you are asking about and wondering about, uh, NFTs. Again, we're talking about this again on the podcast. So, Bonnie, thanks so much. Welcome. Glad you're here. Thank you. I know that you are a regular podcast listener, and so you know what's going on here, but a lot of folks may just be getting to know you. So why don't you let us know kind of who you are, where you're from, what you do creatively, and then we can kind of jump into this backstory of of NFTs and how you got into that. Well, I was introduced to the arts really young. I mean, really young. Um, In New York, I, I was eight years old and I was chosen from a group of students to take my art classes at the University of Buffalo. And so yeah, my mom used to take us to art museums and galleries just to get us out of the house, I think. <laughs> and then I got um, I got a master's degree in, in fine arts. And so I've been an artist for uh, over 42 years and a teacher. And so wow. I taught in the public schools and I taught, you know, privately and, and all over the place. Um, and then I've, I've left the teaching recently to push into these NFTs because... Wow. Uh, yeah, my son was huge into crypto. And almost two years ago, actually, he was into crypto and he's like, Mom, you got to do this. Mom, you got to do this. And, you know, I, I was a little skeptical at first. And I was like, No, I'm not sure I can do that. No, I'm not that tech savvy. And he's like, Yeah, you can do this. You need to do this. And so I had to research and I researched and I studied and I made sure I knew exactly what I was doing because I wanted to do it right. You know, you don't want to come off as not knowing what you're doing and you wanted to have quality in your work because, you know, that's really important to have that quality in your work. So I did a lot of studying. I met a lot of wonderful people. Oh my goodness, from all over the world. I was just amazed at how many people I met from all over the world. I mean, I learned how to do crypto, to do uh, NFTs in crypto from a Korean man through wow. YouTube. And uh, he had like 6,000 followers and he would message me back. I would ask him a question. He would message me back. And now he's up to like 60,000 followers <laughs> and he still messages me back. If I have yeah. a question, I contact him and he messaged me back. Yeah. So the NFT world, um, the artists are just truly amazing and truly caring and truly supportive. And that's exactly what I want to be. And that's why I came on here. Cause it's like, Hey, we need to have more Christians in this space. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and and I just, it's just such a fabulous tool to use. And it's, you know, like you say in all your podcasts and things, we have to have a lot of different avenues sure. as artists, different revenues as artists, different income as artists, whether it's teaching or uh, merchandising or things like that. And so NFT is just another one of those tools that you can use um, in all of it. And it's just really exciting. So I am so encouraged to hear you say this because, you know, I think a lot of times when people hear about the crypto world or hear about NFTs and that sort of thing, they think about, you know, a 19 year old in their bedroom with a computer, (laughs) you know, that you got to be super young, super tech savvy, all this sort of thing. And I love it that people of every age, every experience level all over the world are are getting into this. So for those guys, for those of you that are brand new to NFTs and that sort of thing, we did a great podcast earlier in the year um, on NFTs with actually a couple that, you know, Patrick Bezalel and Lily and who are from Singapore and really went through a lot of the the deep dive of, you know, what are NFTs and that sort of thing. But I'd love to. So if you if you're looking for that, definitely check that out as well. We'll put that uh, in the in the show link, so you can just click right there. But I'd love to hear you know the type of work that you are putting out through NFTs and through you know the blockchain, as opposed to the work that you were doing traditionally, and then price points and you know just all of that because I think it's so brand new it's like people are just like how do you what do you even put out there like what are you doing the same kind of art there that you are in the real world and and so just walk us through that 
I actually am doing the same art because I'm, you know, I'm a traditional painter yeah. and I, uh, I paint, you know, when I paint, it takes me three to 18 months to do my realistic paintings. Now mm. I also do abstract flowing paints and God just flows with me through that, you know, because it's, it's difficult to do those abstracts because I have to allow God to flow there. And I mean, I do in my traditional works too, because I, I paint with the spirit, you know, yeah. I mean, I can't paint otherwise right. I paint with the spirit because, you know, once I start a painting, I pray every, while I'm painting, I play, play worship music the whole time I'm painting and it allows the spirit to paint through me. It's, I mean, some days I'm like, oh my God, that, that's just awful. That's just awful. And I will come back into my studio and I'll come in and say, oh, wow, God, you did a really good job there. You know, that's not what that looked like yesterday. It's like I sometimes think that the spirit changes it when I leave the room and I come back because, you know, I just allow the spirit to flow through me. And with my abstract paintings, I have to allow God to flow because it moves so quickly and, you know, just the flow of the spirit. And when I first started in the NFT world, I was really, really confused because I was told to price my NFTs at half the cost of what I would price a uh, real world painting, you know, an IRL painting in real life and an IRL painting. And so what I did was I put up my first collection and it was called European Landscape. And I did that. I priced them at half of what I would price my original artworks for. Well, come to find out that is not how you price <laughs> NFTs. When you put up a collection, your collection should all be around the same price point, mm. basically. So you want to leave it, depending on whether what blockchain you're on, you want to leave it at the same price point for that particular collection. So one night I was praying and I was like, God, I do not know what I'm doing. What am I yeah. doing? Yeah. Why am I doing NFTs? And I went to bed that night and he's got such a sense of humor because I'm not a morning person. And he wakes me up early in the morning to talk to me. And he said, it's a ministry. And I went, okay, all right. So I looked at it totally different. I got up that day and I looked at it totally different because on all my NFTs, I have scripture, I have a devotion and I have a prayer mm. on every single NFT. And so I just went into that more and more. I kept adding more and more because I wanted it to be in ministry. I wanted to look at, at my artwork and see and feel the peace of God coming from that NFT. Yeah. And that they would have comfort looking at that NFT, knowing that, you know, and reach the lost with NFTs. Well, that's when I met Patrick and Lily. That's when I met mission Dow, and that's when i met all these other christian artists and we're all coming together to build the web three and to build the metaverse and to build um galleries in the metaverse and to build churches in the metaverse and and so there's a group called um kingdom uh in kingdom uh i can't even think of the name of that right now but it's a it's a discord and most of the NFTs are on Discord. Yeah. I don't like Discord, but a lot of them are on Discord. But we meet through Zoom now, and we're building a foundation of Christian artists. And that's wow. why I'm here today, because wow. I want to build a foundation of Christian artists. Who did God send in when he was going into battle? But he sent in the artists. He sent in the musicians. He sent in the artists to go before, to go forth into that metaverse. And so I've always felt that Christians come after the fact, like Christians came after the fact when movies came out. Yeah, Christians late adopters, after right. The yeah, fact, totally. yeah, Christians yeah. came after the fact with the internet that it's evil. No, and we don't want Christians to come after the fact into the NFTs and into the metaverse and into Web3. We want Christians to be a forefront in yeah. it. We want to be the light in the darkness. And so that's why we're building this core of artists 
and we're meeting and we're building this core of artists. I've even started a Twitter space because that's how you get your NFTs out there is through Twitter spaces. And I had never talked in Twitter spaces ever before. And I've had the opportunity to go into Twitter spaces and talk about the kingdom of God, you know, into a Ukraine space and pray for them in that space. So NFTs have opened this whole new avenue for me in ministry. Wow. So my second collection I did was called Art Permissions. And I did it a little bit differently because I did additions that all people could afford. Mm -hmm. And so I did it on the Polygon Network, which is there's no cost to buy on the Polygon Network. And there's no no cost to put up on the Polygon Network. And so all artists have access on the Polygon Network to put up their artwork for Mm -hmm. free. Wow. So is that that then becomes a a an exhibition space rather than a purchase space or because no, no it is on the blockchain also um, but with the polygon network it doesn't get minted to the blockchain until somebody buys it mm. the reason why it's expensive to put up um the ethereum blockchain on foundation on some known origin on some of those blockchains is because you're actually minting it to the blockchain and it's there forever. You can't change it. Yeah. On the Polygon network, you can change it. You can go in and change things. You can add things. You can take it away if I wanted to add more scripture. Um, and you can change those things. You can add, you know, you can give away um, prints. And you can, I mean, it's even an avenue for some artists to sell artwork. Yeah. I haven't gone that way yet because you have to think on a big platform you are reaching the entire world and so if you are going to sell your artwork with the nft you have to remember that you have to create that artwork and it could go anywhere across the world and you have to think about import and export taxes but i have found um fine art america is a company Mm-hmm. that does prints sure. and I'm sure you know about fine art America. They do merchandise and everything. And so you can hook a print. So such as if somebody purchases your NFTs, you can also give them a print and fine art America will ship it anywhere in the world. And you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to um, ship it out yourself. Right. You know, they do everything for you. And so that's another added thing that you can add merchandise to your NFTs and things like that. With my NFTs, 30% goes to missions. So of course, mm-hmm. 10% goes to the church. And then 30% goes to missions. And um, it's incredible that so many people, so many NFT artists want to give to missions and want to give to different things all around the world. Yeah. And so that's why I made my art for missions, a lower price so that everybody, because people were like, I want to do this. I want to give to those causes that you have. I want to give to missions, but I can't afford your NFTs. Mm -hmm. And so making additions. So I made a hundred additions of each one at a lower cost so that everybody could afford it. Now, everybody knows the, the, the big ones, you know, that have, that have sold in the last couple of years and, and that sort of thing. I mean, what are NFTs going for in, in the average space for the average artist that's coming on and, and doing their first collections and that sort of thing, what kind of revenue are people experiencing? And, and, and I'm even interested. So that's question one. Question two is this is a whole different world. I mean, we're not just, we're not talking about a new website. We're talking about a whole different universe. So what does marketing look like in the NFT space and, and in the metaverse? Marketing in the metaverse is pretty much now on Twitter. Um, I just literally this week put up a spatial gallery. And a spatial gallery is a gallery that's kind of sort of in the metaverse. It's a meeting place where people can come into my spatial gallery. They can walk around. They can talk to each other. They can talk about artwork. I'm in a painter's group on uh, Twitter. And each of us set up our own gallery. 
And then we set up a, a gallery of together. Yeah. And so each of us have six or seven paintings in the gallery. And then there's a portal that you can click on and go through the portal and into other people's galleries from that gallery. And so you can set up different portals. Like we could set up a Christian gallery and have all Christian artists in that gallery. And then we could have portals that go to each one of their individual galleries in the metaverse. Yeah. And so that's one way of marketing besides Twitter. And Twitter spaces, you can go into any Twitter space and talk about your artwork. And yeah. that, to me, it's called shilling. When you go into these spaces, shilling is when you're trying to sell your artwork. And you don't know who's in there. You don't know who's buying. And it's very interesting. Um, and it's a very different way of talking to people. But what I have found is, you know, people come out and they really talk about heart and soul about their artwork and to the point where some are very torn and it gives me opportunity to pray with those people. If I'm a speaker or if I'm a host or a co-host, yeah. I'll say, Hey, let me just pray with you about that. You know? Yeah. And if they're having trouble selling, I'll say, Hey, let's, let's just pray about that. This is a whole new world. Absolutely. And, I mean, <laughs> and I don't have it all figured out. Right. But I'm willing to go through it with everybody else also. I'm willing to help other artists because I believe God is raising up an army of Christian artists to go into the metaverse and take over in the metaverse, to be in all the spaces, to be in the metaverse, to have their own galleries in the metaverse, to go into church services and have their artwork on the walls of the church. Um, last week, I went into the metaverse and went to a conference that a church was having out of Florida. And so it's just a whole different concept, um, you know, in the metaverse. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So you're marketing on Twitter, you're marketing on other, other things like that. And then as far as revenue like what are pieces selling for that you're seeing yourself your friends selling i mean what what are average revenue that that people are making it in in what you're seeing so these really big projects you know where they're making 10,000 of the same thing and just changing the backgrounds or changing the colors and things like that you know it's all different price points some people there's there's a uh, a platform called the voice and that's really lower, lower end. And people are selling anywhere from a dollar to $300 on there. Mm -hmm. So there's all different price points. Now, if you're on foundation, you have to have a higher price point or a known origin because it's costing you, it's called gas fees to literally put your work up on the, in the metaverse, on the platform, you mm -hmm. know, because it's automatically being minted to the blockchain. And that can cost you anywhere from $20 to $400 just to put one image up. Right. And so that you're taking into consideration how much it's going to cost you sure. to put that image up. And then you have OpenSea where OpenSea has everything from Polygon to Ethereum. And if you're putting it on Ethereum, you're going to have to have a higher price point than you have on Polygon because you're paying gas fees on there also. So what I'm seeing um, happen is you need to start low. And I'm not talking $6 low, but you can start $6 low. You know, if you're an artist that puts out matte, can paint one a day, you know, some artists I know can paint one a day. I have all my friends, I, ha I have one friend that paint paints three a day, you know, unlike me that does, you know, one sometimes in a year. Yeah, a month, right, but right. Exactly, you know, unless I'm doing my acrylic pours or whatever like that. But I mean, if you're, you can put out and start at a lower price range, you can build your collectors faster if you are able to start out at a lower price range. Yeah. I think um, the lower price range I'm talking about is like around $25, mm -hmm. you know, right around there, $10 to $25 if you're starting out at a lower price range. 
Um, and then you start moving it up as you go. If you're on like foundation or Ethereum, um, you want to obviously start off at a higher range. And <laughs> it's funny because my mind is thinking here in Ethereum and it's point one <laughs> is what you should start off out with. And so, you know, I have to, I'm trying to categorize the value of that in my head right now. But, you know, anywhere from, you know, about $300, yeah. you know, anywhere from $300 to $600 on those. And, are, and the artists that you're seeing do this, are, is this a small percentage of their income, half their primary income? They've stopped doing other things in the art world. They're totally in the NFT space. Or what does that mix look like? And even, even for you, really, what does that look like? Uh, for me, it's it's just part of my income. Like like I said, I, I do shows. Uh, I sell online. I sell merchandise. I sell prints. I, yeah. um, you know, so I do all the different ranges of things that yeah, you sure. do as an artist teaching and everything. Um, so it's just part of my income. It's not, but there are artists that it's their total income. Wow. So just um, an exciting thing. You know, I've watched the art, the Korean artist, he's a photographer and I've watched him grow from selling his pieces for $25 to now his pieces go for six ETH, which would be ETH is going for $4,000. So $24,000 a piece wow. for his NFTs now. Wow. And he was excited. He just posted um, last month that one of his pieces resold for 12 E, which times that times 4,000. <laughs> and so that's what his piece just sold for. Wow. And the great thing, the great thing about NFTs is you get royalties off your work. Yes, forever. You know, back right, yeah. in the days, right. you know, musicians got royalties but visual artists never got royalties. If your painting sold, it's gone. You never got another thing. But you get royalties off of your artwork, 10 to 15%. So he was posting, you know, I just got 10% off of this piece that just sold for, you know, over $40,000. He Incredible. got 10% of that when it resold. Well, wow. So it's exciting. I'm exciting to see him you know, moving up in the NFT world. And, you know, I'm praying that all of us move up into that NFT world. And that's the thing, getting in at the beginning yes, right. is really important. And so that's why I'm here because I want to help Christian artists get into this now and not do it hindsight. You yeah. know, the church is always doing things in hindsight. And there's such a core group of Christians right now from all over the world that, you know, I have friends, Christian artists from Nigeria and Africa and all over the world right now. It's, it's just amazing to me that I never imagined this and they have the opportunity, you know, to sell. And that's the other thing. There's third world countries that are doing NFTs. Yeah. And six dollars is a lot for them to sell an NFT. <clears throat> and so they're making a lot of money, comparatively speaking, in sure. their culture. Sure. And so I have a friend in Nigeria. He's doing very well selling his for ten dollars a piece. <clears throat> so it's all relative to where you're located and how much you are making and how much you are doing. The Korean artist is a teacher. And he's retired. He left teaching and <laughs> bought a house and I he's doing it. NFTs full time now. I so, it. you know, it, it all depends on, you know, where you're going in the NFT world. And I just want Christians to be out there and in it and not wait and say, oh, I should have done that. Yeah. Well, Bonnie, I love what you're doing. I love the heart behind it. And I want to give people the opportunity to connect with you and what you guys are doing, because I've said when we did the you know interview with uh, with Patrick and Lily, I said, guys, I I don't know about this. I, this is this is brand new, you know, to me. And I I think people have a lot of different opinions, you know, pro and con on on both sides of this. I just I love 
the the kind of forward looking spirit and just like you know what we're gonna go with this thing and we're interested in this and God has put this in our heart let's go for it and I I think it's awesome and although we don't know all the details rarely do we know all the details when we go into into new things and um so Bonnie where can folks connect with you um and maybe the the group of artists that you guys are on Discord and that sort of thing to kind of take the next step and jump into this world if this is ringing somebody's bell and they're interested in going that, in that direction. Well, I, I certainly hope it is because we do want to build this army of artists, Christian artists. And I'm, I'm excited to help build that army of Christian artists in the metaverse and in web three, but um, everything is on my website, brooksgallery.com. Everything, my NFTs are on my website, my mission statements, everything is on my website at brooksgallery.com. You can always um, reach me through uh, Twitter. My Twitter is brooksgallery1 and my Instagram is brooksgallery. So pretty much everything's brooksgallery and Twitter is brooksgallery1. But you can reach me anywhere and, and DM me anytime. I will answer you yeah. and I will get you anybody hooked up with any of these groups that you want to because I really want them in a strong believer that we really need to take this by storm. Yeah. Well, Bonnie, what a pleasure to have you on today, hear your story. And I, I know it's your heart. I always say this, listen, if God did it in me, if he did it in you, he'll do it in somebody else. And and I just, I really believe that. And so thanks for sharing your story today. And uh, guys, be sure to click the link in the show notes. You can go to Bonnie's website and find out a lot more. And uh, if this is something that God's put on your heart, go for it. I can't I can't think of a, a better way to, to find out a bit more about it than to actually find out from people that are actually doing it. So Bonnie, thanks so much for being on today. 